Hello, I'm going to be talking now about rounding errors and covering what is meant by an absolute error and also a relative error. Now, these ideas occur in different areas of computer science and also other subjects too. So physics being the most obvious example where you do an experiment, you have some error in your measurements and you try and calculate it empirically. It is all relevant. In terms of computer science, one application is considering representing numbers in binary and fractions in particular. As we've talked about, some decimal fractions do not map exactly onto a binary scale and so you end up having to do your best and represent a number similar or close to your intended number and we have some error introduced in that case. We effectively have to round up or down and choose the nearest representation which is most similar to our intended representation. That's what a rounding error is. It's just when you have to round down or up and you lose some accuracy. Now, even if the maths did work perfectly and every single decimal fraction could get converted to binary fractions without any issues, we only have so much space free in our, in our memory. We only have so many bits available to represent real numbers. And so clearly we've got infinite number. We've got an infinite number of real numbers and they cannot get converted properly into a finite number of bits. We have to do our best effort and sometimes have some errors. We may have to round up or round down in other words. And the first concept related to this is that of an absolute error, which is just a number telling us basically how good, how good we got, how close we got to our actual value. So the expression for calculating absolute error is just subtracting our closest represented value from the actual number we're trying to represent. So how close did we get? The closer we do get, the smaller the absolute error will be. And the two vertical lines either side of our expression here are just representing the absolute value, which is what we take when we do this subtraction, because this could be a negative, this result. If our closest value was bigger than our actual number, we would get a negative, which we don't really want. So all we do, we chop off the negative sign and just take the positive value of the subtraction result here. So for example, 0 0.08, is a decimal number. Let's say we want to convert it into binary. And here I've got a, what is that? A five bit mantissa and a four bit exponent. Unfortunately, using that, I can't represent 0 0.08 perfectly. I, I cannot get it. This is when that, so 0 0.78125 is the closest I can get just below it. And the bottom one here, 0 0.08595 is the closest I can get just above it. So I cannot get 0 0.08 dead on, I've got to pick either one below or one above. And you can see the one below is closer. So I'm going to take this one, it will minimize my error in this representation. So I plug in the numbers and we often write absolute error as E with a, a subscript. So I plug in my numbers and here they're going to be positive. So there's no negative value, but either way, my result is 0 0.001875. That is my absolute error when I'm trying to represent 0.08 using this floating point representation. Now, to be honest, absolute errors are not very useful in and of themselves. We want to be able to make some comparisons and we can't really make a comparison with just a number like this. We want to compare it to the size of our number. And so we do that by calculating relative errors. So the relative error of a number is just the absolute error divided by the actual number we were hoping to represent making sure again we're using absolute values, we don't want any negatives in any of these calculations. Now that'll give you a fraction, but percentages are easier to comprehend, so you can just times by 100 to make a percentage. Now here is the answer for our example here. Instead of E A, A, we often write relative errors as E subscript R to just differentiate it. So I'm dividing my absolute error by my original number, and we get here, 0.0234375. Again, not very useful on its own. That's why percentages make things a lot more readable. So times it by 100 and limiting it to one decimal place, we get 2.3%. So that tells you really this error is relatively small compared to the size of our number. In some cases, that might be unacceptable. That might be too much of an error to be okay with. But in, I would say that's generally okay. If it was say 20% or 50%, that's clearly much more of an issue. It means almost your whole number is an error, so basically. So you can't represent it very well. Now regarding relative errors, this might be quite logical, but the larger our actual number is, 
the smaller the effect the absolute error will have on it. So the lower our relative error will be. So this maths here is trying to show this effect, maybe not incredibly clearly. We have our relative error being calculated from our absolute error divided by our number, which we're going to call n. And as n increases towards infinity, as it tends towards infinity, the relative error tends towards zero. So at infinity, zero would be our relative error. What that's trying to say is, as you increase n, as you increase your number, the absolute error has a smaller and smaller effect. And the opposite is true. So the smaller your number is, the larger the effect the absolute error has. That's why it's crucial to calculate our relative error, because otherwise we've got no real sense of whether it's the error is an issue or not. Here again, similar notation, as n tends towards 1, so it tends towards a small number, it equals our absolute error. So that means it's more and more of a problem. So what we can take from this is when n is 1, our relative error is going to equal our absolute error. And of course, when n is 0, because we are dividing by 0 in that case, we'd have an undefined relative error. And the takeaway from this is if we want to compare the effect of rounding errors on differently sized numbers, we really need to calculate the relative error because otherwise an absolute error is not very useful. We can't make comparisons unless we look at it versus the size of our number trying to be represented.